Have you ever wondered why we can't tickle ourselves? Well, then you have come to the right video. In this video, we will answer the question of why we can tickle other people but not ourselves. This is a question that has received a lot of attention in research in both psychology and neuroscience. By providing you with some of this research, we hope to shed some light on the question of why we can't tickle ourselves. Welcome to Sight. To answer the question of why we cannot tickle ourselves, we should first make a distinction between two different kinds of neurons, sensory neurons and motor neurons. Now, as a disclaimer, there are other kinds of neurons as well, but these are the ones that we will focus on in this video. Starting off with sensory neurons, these neurons are activated by sensory input like sound or touch and will transmit this sensory information to your brain. Motor neurons, on the other hand, will transmit information from your brain to your muscles with the purpose of performing a certain action. To help explain the interaction between sensory neurons and motor neurons, suppose for instance that you feel something crawling on your hand. This sensory stimulation will cause sensory receptors in your skin to be activated. This, in turn, will cause sensory neurons in your body to transmit this information to your brain. This is called an afferent signal. Your brain will process this information and will send a motor command via motor neurons to the muscles in your hand to shake the bug away. These signals from the motor cortex to the muscles are called efferent signals. The difference between afferent and efferent signals is that afferent signals travel towards the brain from, for instance, sensory receptors, and efferent signals travel away from the brain towards, for example, your muscles. Now that we understand what sensory neurons are and what motor neurons are, we can start answering the question of why we cannot tickle ourselves. When we try tickling ourselves, for example on our foot, a motor command is sent by our brain to the muscles in our hands to make them tickle our foot. At the same time as this motor command is transmitted, a copy of the motor signal is also sent to the somatosensory cortex in our brain. This brain region is associated with receiving and processing of sensory information regarding touch. A question you may ask is, why is a copy of this motor signal sent to the somatosensory cortex? Well, if you recall, when we make a movement, a motor command is sent by our brain to our muscles. At the same time, an efference copy, which is a copy of this motor signal, is also being transmitted. So when we try tickling ourselves on our foot, a motor command is sent by our brain to the muscles in our hands to tickle ourselves on the foot. At the same time, an efference copy is being sent to the somatosensory cortex to inform it about what is going on. Specifically, the purpose of the efference copy is to let the somatosensory cortex know what sensations it might expect to receive. In other words, as your brain sends a motor command to your hand to tickle your foot, it also sends a copy of the signal to the part of your brain where you feel to let it know that you're about to tickle yourself so you might expect to feel a tickling sensation. In this sense, efference copies allow for us to generate a cognitive prediction of future events. Such predictive codes are also known as a forward model a predictive system on what we might expect to feel. When your tickling hand finally reaches your foot and you start tickling yourself, sensory receptors in your skin will become activated. This sensory input will then travel via sensory neurons to your somatosensory cortex. However, 
because this region has already received predictive information from the efference copy of the motor command about the tickling action, the sensory input is weakened. Because your brain already predicted that your foot will be tickled, the tactile stimulation will be felt, but the ticklishness won't. And this is why we are unable to tickle ourselves. On the other hand, when someone else is tickling us, the tickling sensation will not be weakened. This is because when someone else is tickling us, the sensory stimulation on our skin comes as a surprise. The sensory input that travels to the somatosensory cortex reaches this brain region for the first time. Because we didn't produce the physical act of tickling, no motor command was sent to the muscles in our hand. Therefore, no efference copy was made to generate the forward model prediction that you are about to be tickled. And thus, the sensor information from the tickling is not weakened, which will lead to the ticklishness being felt. Thus far, we have explained why it is possible for us to tickle each other, but not ourselves. And we have discussed how this is related to efference copies and the somatosensory cortex. It could also be interesting to take a look at a cool study conducted by Weisskranz and colleagues. In this experiment, the participants had their feet tickled either by themselves or by the experimenter. As predicted, the participants were more ticklish when they were tickled by the experimenter as compared to when they were tickled by themselves. However, in this study, there was a third condition in which the experimenter tickled the participant's foot with their own hand. In this condition, participants felt more ticklish when compared to when they tickled themselves, but less ticklish as compared to when the experimenter tickled them. The explanation provided for these results is that when we tickle ourselves, as previously discussed in this video, we produce an efference copy alongside our motor command. However, we also have an awareness of the fact that we are the ones moving our own hand to tickle ourselves. We are able to have this awareness because of something called proprioception, which is our sense of being aware of our own movement, action, and location in space. Thus, when we tickle ourselves, not only is there an efference copy that allows us to generate predictions on what sensations we are going to experience, we are also simultaneously aware of the fact that we are the ones generating these incoming sensations. It is this awareness alongside the efference copy that together weaken the sensory stimulation of the tickling. When someone else is tickling us with their own hand, there is no motor command and thus no efference copy, but there is an awareness of the fact that it is our own hand that is generating this tactile stimulation or tickling. This explains the results that participants felt slightly more ticklish when they were tickled by the experimenter with their own hand as compared to when they were tickled by themselves. Lastly, when the participants were tickled by the experimenters, they experienced the most amount of ticklishness. This is because the tickling came as a surprise. In this video, we hope we have answered the question of why we are able to tickle other people but not ourselves. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to drop them down below in the comment section. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to ring the notification bell and we'll see you in the next video.